Welcome to Corporate Finance. Welcome to session three of Introduction to Corporate Finance. Today we're going to talk about uh, working with financial statements. My name is Greg Pierce. I'm the finance coach. And we're going to look at ways to use the information that we discussed in session number two last time, uh, the income statement, the balance sheet, and then the cash flow statement, how we communicate the results of the company to the outside world and also within the company. First of all, we're going to talk about some key ratios we need to know. And the ones I've listed here are ones you should try to memorize for life. They're, I've really kind of selected the ones that I've used across four different industries. When I worked in industry, uh, every company I worked for used these same ratios. Um, some more than others. So this allows you to uh, look at which ratios are important and uh, primary importance and which are maybe of secondary importance. There may be 40 to 50 ratios listed in the chapter. So we want to focus on the ones that are most important. Um, we're going to break them into five categories, short-term solvency ratios. The important ones you want to remember are uh, current ratio and quick ratio. And we'll go over ways to not just memorize them, but to understand them. And we'll look for mnemonics to try and remember them, little memory devices that will help us remember these going forward. Uh, long-term solvency ratios, we want to look at debt to equity, equity multiplier, uh, also long-term debt to equity ratio. Um, and with the debt to equity, if you have that ratio, you have three. So we're going to look at ways to remember one and get three for one. Um, in the asset management category, we want to look at uh, inventory turnover, day sales and inventory, day sales outstanding, um, and day sales and receivables. Uh, total asset turnover to a lesser degree. In the profitability ratio category, we want to look at profit margin. Uh, and we're going to call that something different. We're going to call that net return on is preferable, a little bit easier to remember, and we'll develop a mnemonic for that. So net return on sales, net return on assets, net return on equity. Uh, will be discussed in the profitability area. And then the market value area, we're going to talk about P.E. ratio, heavily used in uh, both industry and on Wall Street uh, by analysts to measure companies' price-to-earnings uh, success. Earnings per share will also be looked at, and market to book are three key ratios in the market value ratio area. So let's start with our five learning objectives. Uh, by the end of this session, you want to be able to understand what a cash flow is and the financial uh, statements, uh, statement of cash flows as the most important of the three financial statements. How to standardize financial statements. So when we're comparing a large company and a small company, we can do that on a percent of sales or percent of asset basis. Uh, third, we want to look at many of the key ratios that are used uh, throughout industry and throughout uh, the banking world. Uh, the DuPont identity is our fourth uh, key uh, learning objective. Why was the DuPont identity developed and what is it? And is, are there any mnemonics for remembering it? And finally, how do we use all this financial statement information? We have lots and lots of numbers from the last session on the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. And how do we use this information to our uh, advantage uh, looking into the future? Uh, learning objectives one. Let's look at this cash flow identity. Remember from the last session, session two, that cash flow in equals cash flow out. Cash flow out from assets equal cash flow to creditors plus cash flow to stockholders. Uh, basically, that's what a company does. It uh, spends cash and it produces cash. If it doesn't have cash, it quickly becomes a failure. So we uh, acquire assets, we pay our bills, uh, we pay creditors, uh, we pay owners, and this is a use of cash. And hopefully we have uh, higher sources of cash, which will allow us to do all of that successfully. Uh, in general, uh, uses of cash are th activities that involve spending cash and sources of cash generate cash. Uh, in general, we're going to look for uh, mnemonics again to understand what is a use of cash and what is a source of cash. Uh, this slide depicts it very well. A source of cash is a left side balance sheet item going down or a right side balance sheet item going up. For instance, if my current liabilities go up, that means I have bills that are unpaid. Uh, it's kind of a weird way of looking at it, but that's a source of cash. Uh, conversely, if my uh, left side balance sheet item goes down, if my inventory account goes down, that means I sold some inventory and that's a source of cash. So left side balance sheet item down, right side balance sheet item up, those are sources of cash. Uses of cash are exactly the opposite. So if a right, left side balance sheet item goes up, um, we buy some inventory, that's a use of cash. So left side balance sheet item up, right side balance sheet item down, those are uses of cash. And that's an easy way to remember it, uh, looking at the balance sheet. 
So what is a statement of cash flows? It's a, a financial statement that summarizes sources and uses of cash over a specified period of time. And again, this is probably the most important one because, again, at the end of the day, we have to be able to pay our employees, uh, on whether it be the, the end of the week on Friday or the end of the month. If, if uh, the payroll goes out once per month, we must have cash available to uh, pay. The, so the CFO um, carefully watches a statement of cash flows all the time. Again, these are prepared at the end of the month with the income statement and the balance sheet. And if you look at it over the long term, you find that a uh, statement of cash flows is just that. It's, it's the income statement plus an adjustment for depreciation plus any payout of dividends uh, and then change, plus changes in the balance sheet. And that dictates the amount of cash uh, that goes up or down during the month in the firm. Uh, we break these today into three categories, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. And uh, basically, we start again with last period's ending cash flow and look at uh, net income. So the first line that comes into the statement of cash flows is net income right off the income statement. So it's critical. It points out the criticality of having a successful uh, month or quarter or year in net income. Uh, if you have positive net income, everything kind of revolves around that. And that's a, a really good kickoff to your statement of cash flows. Uh, beyond that, we will add back depreciation expense, and then we'll look at changes in the balance sheet. As I said, if uh, receivables go up, as shown here, that's a left side balance sheet item. That's a use of cash. If uh, payables goes down, that's also use of cash uh, and so on down down the line. And so we pull these numbers directly off the income statement and the balance sheet, and we end up with a net cash flow of 14. We started last year with 84. And that might be 84 million. You have to watch your units. And we added 14 this year to uh, show the end of the year cash flow at 98. Uh, very, very important financial statement, the most important financial statement. And it's one you have to keep your eye on at all times as chief financial officer.